it's Monday, and that so happens to be the day that I like to talk about monsters. I'm Jeff Arbuckle, and this is Monster Mondays presented to you by Film Seizure. You can catch new episodes of Film Seizure with myself and Jason Oliver on Wednesdays, but Mondays are for me to talk about monster movies. This week's monster is another creature from space. So I've kind of been wanting to do this for a little while, so I'm going to dip into the Don Dohler filmography for the first time with Night Beast. Don Dohler is a pretty interesting dude. It's hard to say that he truly makes good movies, but what he does is make charming and damn entertaining movies. They are made on micro budgets, but you can see that he very, very much loves the craft of filmmaking. Dohler is from Baltimore, and when he was a child, his mother bought him a film projector. He instantly got fascinated with film when he drew little stick figures on a piece of scotch tape and ran it through the projector and if you are like me and worked in a projection booth you know that every projector gets very hot from the light bulb used to project the image so naturally that scotch tape burnt up but before that he could see the little figures dance across the screen and at that point he was hooked he had to make movies As a teenager, Dohler started up a fanzine that he published himself called Wild. It was kind of like Mad Magazine. It featured little comics and cartoons and such. Most notably, it featured some big underground comic creators like Art Spiegelman and Jay Lynch. Interestingly enough, Wild's mascot, Dohler's own creation, Pro Jr., ended up becoming quite a popular character as, thanks to Lynch, several underground artists, R. Crumb included, would create their own interpretations of the character. By the mid-70s, Dohler was making films. He made sci-fi movies about an alien coming to Earth and causing all sorts of havoc. By the 90s, he still had a passion to make movies, but he didn't really care so much about directing. He handed the reins over to a guy named Joe Ripple so so that Dohler could pretty much focus on the technical aspects like cinematography or editing. Night Beast is a pretty simple premise. The Night Beast lands on Earth during a meteor shower. Some local hunters let the sheriff know about what they saw, but as they investigate that, the Night Beast stalks through the nearby small town. And as he moves through the town of Perry Hall, Maryland, he uses his space ray to disintegrate anyone he comes across. Eventually, the hunters and the sheriff and his deputy, Lisa, engage the alien, but their numbers are almost entirely wiped out by the disintegration gun. With the help of a local farmer, they are able to shoot the gun out of the night beast's hands, and but basically they also discover that they can't really hurt the alien, but they can at least uh, take out his primary mode of killing people. Now, meanwhile, the governor of Maryland is planning a visit to Perry Hall, and the mayor of the small town is planning a big party for him. As Sheriff Cinder plans to evacuate the town until they can get rid of the Night Beast, the mayor, Wicker, refuses to cancel the party. Cinder decides that he will go ahead and evacuate the town regardless. And before he can do that, he involves a local doctor played by Don Dollar regular George Stover and has a confrontation with town shithead Drago. Now, Cinder eventually gets help from his friend Jamie to clear out the mayor's party by claiming a poison gas leak is uh, leaking from an old mine and everyone needs to evacuate. The local doctor's house gets attacked by the night beast and they discover that electricity seems to hurt the creature. So when Jamie, the young man helping Cinder and Lisa, arrives to help the doctors, he discovers that Drago has beaten up and strangled his love interest, leading to Jamie going on a vengeful mission to fuck up Drago. Cinder and Lisa run into the Night Beast once more, but are able to escape, and they go back to her place to fix up a gash on Cinder's leg from the chase and decide to take a break for a sex scene because, sure... With the last of the people being taken out of town, more trouble comes in the form of Drago because, well, why not? He assaults Deputy Lisa and then maybe either tries to kill her too or just rape her or something. I'm not entirely sure what his motive was there. I guess he just cannot go a minute without assaulting and raping a woman. When he then attacks Cinder, he has him at the business end of a gun, but Jamie comes to the rescue and kills Drago. 
honestly, I was probably happier to see him get killed each each time I watched this than the actual Night Beast. I mean, Night Beast is just doing what Night Beasts do. I mean, and ultimately, our hero set up an electrical trap that kills the Night Beast, and unfortunately, Jamie had to hold the wire to make sure that Night Beast would get fried, which causes his face to melt right off his fucking skull, which is pretty cool. So let's talk about my three things I like about this movie. First, the movie is rather ambitious for such a small budget. There are some legitimately solid special effects in play. The spaceship flying through space, the disintegrations, explosion effects, it's all very good for what is almost impossible not to call a glorified home movie on 16 millimeter film. The creature itself is really cool, has like a really cool latex mask that has some decent craftsmanship with what looks like a snarling, drooling face full of teeth. I have always appreciated Dolor's creatures in his movies, even if the face is static and not articulated in the least. Second, I do appreciate the classic tropes this movie tries to employ throughout the movie. The sheriff who is above reproach and is only doing what he can to protect the citizens, the mayor who only looks after his own interests despite a very large concern, a la Jaws, uh, simple locals, a town bully and drunk who beats up his girlfriend who's cheating on him with another good guy. Uh, that same good guy is a young and eager buck, kind of full of virility, um, a disintegration gun. I mean, those these things all feel like things that Dolor has seen in other movies and he liked those things too and wanted to pull it all together into a single narrative set in a small town full of simple folk. Now finally, this movie is simply charming as all get out. It's not particularly shot well or edited well or written well or acted well. I mean, hell, it's not that very good of a movie, but it's got its heart in the right place. Sure, it has all the stuff that I mentioned in my second like, and it seems like it has almost too much going on in this movie. But the charm and the general brisk pace, uh, it, it's, you know, and let's not forget that it's a very low budget and with locals acting and, you know, making it for a very fun watch in general. It's an overall treat. Character motivations are kind of there, uh, but then they might decide to take a break and have a sex scene instead of hunting the night beast. It's, it's this type of stuff that makes these types of movies fun for me to watch. One last thing I will mention about Night Beast, this movie uses a couple of different types of score. There's an orchestral score that may have been borrowed or bought from other movies. Uh, there's a piece that sounds an awful lot like the primary suspense themes from The Incredible Melting Man. Uh, there's also a synthesizer score used. Now, that synthesizer score was written by a 16-year-old J.J. Abrams. Abrams and Dolor met through correspondence after Abrams learned about him in an issue of Cinemagic magazine. And after some correspondence, Dolor asked Abrams if he'd like to send him a recorded score for Night Beast. He did, and Abrams had his first credit. So that wraps up this week's Monster Mondays. Until next week, I'll see you later. And don't forget to check out new episodes of Film Seizure every Wednesday and a new installment of Monster Mondays each Monday on FilmSeizure.com. And also check out new posts at my website, BMovieEnema.com, each and every Friday. <laughs>